and welcome to today's Thursday Thursday training. And my name is Rachel Balansat, I'm a two-star crown. And I am excited to bring you today's topic. I'm so curious, who saw the flyer for today? Did anybody see the flyer for today? Okay, what are you excited about? What, what interested you, what piqued your interest about the flyer? And I'm just gonna say, come off mute. Like, I wanna hear voices today. Let's just hear you. Mindset. Mindset, all right. <laughs> Anybody have any idea like what we're going to talk about today? <laughs> All right. As above, not so below. As above, not so below. What does that mean? What were you going to say, Glenneth? Oh, just coherence with those two, right? <laughs> the coherence. Above, the below. Alignment. alignment, Rachel. Alignment. With my core values. Alignment with core values. That is the topic today. Yes, alignment. Who's living in alignment here? Anybody here living in alignment? All right, there's some like people who are like, I'm definitely, Bruno's like, I'm definitely living in alignment. Mary Jane's living in alignment. Emma's living in alignment. Awesome. Nadia's living in alignment. I love that you know that. What does that mean? What does that mean that you are living in alignment? Can anybody share with me what that means for you? You can jump on. You can just pop off today and do a little popcorn. I welcome voices. Um, with my yeah. core values. Oh, go ahead. Destiny. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah, uh, something similar, I think, to what Marianne was saying. Um, truly aligned with your core values and bringing all parts of yourself um, forward. So I think in the nine to five matrix, sometimes we compartmentalize parts of ourselves and we perform certain roles for certain people. And mm. so it's just transcending all of that and, and being fully aligned with your, all parts of your authentic self. Ooh, that was great. How true is that? How, how many people have experienced that before working not for yourself or even working for yourself, but like where you're working and you're feeling like I kind of have to fit into sort of a box. Like I kind of have to like align with someone else's values. And I kind of have to pretend I have to sort of adopt these other person's values in order to be accepted in the workplace, in order to keep my job, in order to get a pay raise, in order to, um, <laughs> in order to feel like I'm being successful in whatever it is. All right, thank you, thank you. Anyone else? Um, this is Alea, I'm not on video because I'm driving, but, um... Thanks for I being really safe. Liked, yeah, I really liked uh, the flyer because it speaks to integrity. It speaks to our ability to do what we say we will do, to show up completely and just be, be our word and be who we are and then notice the results of what we do and how that reflects what we say we want, what we think we want and what we actually show up as. Mm. With, no judgment, with no judgment just with like noticing right mm -hmm. yeah so it's really like what I'm what I'm saying what I'm feeling and believing in my heart and what I'm thinking that those two things are congruent and that those are the same things coming out of my mouth <laughs> right that what I'm saying and what I'm doing is in alignment with each other and how many of us I mean, I'll just start off with guilty. How many of us have, have or do or still find ourselves um, saying or trying to do something according to what we think we're supposed to do? And we might not even be aware of what that is, what we think we're supposed to do. We might even be aware that I think I'm supposed to do this, but I don't really have to do this, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So continue, let's continue the conversation. What, what else comes to mind in this conversation? Thank you for everyone who's participating in the chats as well. Hey, um, my answer is pretty short. When I'm in alignment, there's no resistance. Mm. Oh, Jem, if when I'm in alignment, there is no resistance. I just had to breathe into that. Okay. Let's jump right into this idea. How many of you feel some resistance in network marketing, <laughs> in this business, right? Okay, I see a lot of hands up. And guess what? 
you're still here. <laughs> Somehow you're on the Zoom and you're like, I want to not be in resistance. So I am here to learn how to remove that resistance. Anyone relate to that? Like, okay, how do I just like break through these resistances? Okay, um, thank you for being honest. And so, yeah, that, what, is, what does that mean that we have some resistance yet we're still, there's something here. So that means that there's something we're aspiring to. There's some kind of aspiration and there's some kind of core values that we're trying to discover and relate to. We're trying to discover these core values and align our core values with what this is so that it's not tripping us up. So we're able to move through some obstacles. All right, what thoughts come to mind? I love this conversation. Thank you. What else comes to mind? What are core values? What are your core values? What are our core values? In my flyer, I have the picture of the iceberg, right? The iceberg, as above, not so below. <laughs> Meaning that maybe what's showing up here isn't quite the same as what's showing up down here. And so how do we make those things match and, and come into congruence and alignment? Well, we have to first discover, we have to look at what that is. We have to like have an honest conversation with ourselves. And so let's start with, you know, we have what are our core values and what are our aspiring core values? So what are our core values? Let's just throw out some values out there. What are your core values? One of the first things, environmental health. You can also shout it out. I like conversation, but I also am happy to look at the chats. So we'll do both. Integrity. Truth. truth. Ooh, the truth shall set you free. Respect, family, permaculture, independence, no. environmental health. Keep going. Go ahead. What were you saying? Love, <laughs> I don't mean love, to talk love, over you. Go love, ahead. Love, 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 love. love, love. <laughs> Keep going. Community. I think Community. core values manifest when you have foundation, Rachel. I think that core values can exist as goals and dreams and all of those things, but there's foundational pieces in life that give us the fortitude and opportunity to pursue them. So foundational core values is where I start. And that's, you know, security, balance, um, financial wherewithal to meet my objectives. And then when I start feeling more solid there, I'm able to develop some of the goals that I want to achieve. And I just wanted to share that with everyone because I don't know how many of you were blessed enough to attend that vision board meeting, but it really facilitated for me how to position my left, right brain. And then with what Sarah's offering our team, it's just giving me the foundational pieces that I can soar. And I'm not like, wait, are we supposed to go this way? Are we supposed to go this way? Do I have to have this? And all of the massive information and support that we have. It's pulling it together for me, aligning it, and give me the goal and I'll hit it. All right, there you go. Well said, thank you. Anyone else? I'm gonna read this, please, please. Connecting with nature. Connecting with nature. That is definitely one of my core values. I walk at the beach every single day. And if you follow my post, you'll see my daily beach walks. <laughs> And literally one of the ways that I share on social media in my widen your reach posts when I'm doing videos or lives or pictures, I often share like I am working from the beach. I am on phone calls with my feet in the sand talking to my team and training them. And I literally say this. I, I have posts where I write that. And that is part of my core value is being able to be connected to nature while I'm working. So thanks. I like that one. Let's hear I would from have others. to say, um, I'd have to say loyalty and um, and integrity, being uh, committed to your word, mm -hmm. and if you're not able to follow through to be in communication, because that builds trust. Mm -hmm. Loyalty and integrity, and following through on your communication, doing what you say. Is that what you mean by following through on your communication? Yeah. Yeah. And if you, something comes up, then, you know, obviously letting the other party know that you are not going to be able to commit like you thought you were. Right. Like Being letting an adult, up line, <laughs> like letting your upline know I can't be on the call today. <laughs> sure. Of course. 
<laughs> if you have that commitment to, to, to mm -hmm. let them know that, right? Um, mm -hmm. Beautiful. Fun. Mm -hmm. Fun and play and pleasure. <laughs> Fun and play and pleasure. Yes. I would add Can you repeat that, Marianne? I would add respect for self, for others, for our planet. Respect for ourselves and for others and our planet. Comments that. All right. So what aspiring core values you have? So these are some core values we have. And now core aspiring core values are like values that you are aspiring to, but you might not be living them as in it's not, what are some things that you want to, that you, that you want to have as your core values that are working on? What are some aspiring core values? I haven't quite, I'm not, so a core values driving your action, core values are driving the action. So if you look at your life and you see, how am I behaving right now? What am I doing? Am I walking my talk? So either that means my values, I do have that as a value. If I'm walking my talk, I'm thinking something and I'm doing it, then I am actually living authentically, right? I am authentically, that is an authentic core value. Thank you, Rita. <laughs> Not in her head, yes. <laughs> she's, my, she's my like side coach over here. <laughs> and, um, and then aspiring is like, um, I really, really want to have the core value of health, but when I look at my actions, I'm eating cookies all day long. I'm eating chips all day long, or I like never exercise. Core value is, an ex is exercise, but I'm not managing to get any exercise in. So it's not an authentic core value if I'm not doing it, but I believe in it. I have an idea about it, but it's not happening. So let's get real. What are some aspiring core values? Discipline. Wants? discipline. Mm -hmm. And how about for yourself? Like what are something that you feel like you're aspiring to, to, but you haven't quite integrated yet? It's not quite there yet. And I'm going to give you an example too, for example. Um, I thought that I had a really good work ethic. <laughs> I thought that I had a really good work ethic one time, once upon a time. And I went and I lived on this farm and they were working, they were like waking up at 7 a.m. and working till like 9 p.m. And I would kind of like hang out and journal and they kind of would roll their eyes about me. Like, why is Rachel taking so long? Like, she's not getting it that we're all starting right now. And I started getting in trouble with the farmer and he started, you know, I was like 26 and he started kind of, <laughs> I was living on this permaculture farm and he just started kind of laying into me and he was actually quite abusive to be honest, not just with me, but with his family and his children. And, but it was really interesting because I started to really be, I cared what he thought. And so I started working really hard and I, and actually, I, I, I thought, so that was actually when I started be having a work ethic. Like, so I valued, I, in my mind, it was an aspiring core value to work hard, but I didn't learn to work hard until I had this experience. Now, and I'm not condoning abuse, but I also make lemon with my lemon. I also make lemonade with my lemons. So here I was given a situation where I was kind of being lazy, honestly, in the morning. I just wanted to do my own thing. I want to have my like routine, but the farm needs to go. I mean, this is like a, a farm that they don't make a lot of money. They needed my work. They needed our help. We needed to be on task. We need to be able to get to the market and sell on time. We need to like show up and all these things. There's very, very disciplined every single day. We worked every single day of the week, including Sundays. And so it wasn't until I was, in trouble. And if I wanted to stay on the farm, I had to like get my act together that I actually finally developed a real core work ethic. So it was an aspiring core value, but I didn't learn how to put in the daily work and put my stuff aside and my desires and needs aside for the, for the benefit of all, for the benefit of the bigger picture, which was this farm that they were hired. They, they were paying for my way there. They were feeding me and housing me. And so I was part of this agreement and I wasn't fulfilling my end. And they called me out. And so I was like, okay, I got to jump in and do this. I got to be a farmer. <laughs> I want to do this. So that aspiring core value integrated, that became a real core value at that time. And I can say that that is the disciplinary moment. I'm so grateful, you know, that that happened because that is the core value of discipline that is now I brought into my network marketing business that I bought into my period business. So like, 
it wasn't necessarily the same above and below. It was this idea until it became part of me. So what are some examples of aspiring core values in your lives? Let's get personal. If you feel up to it, I invite you to share, like, what's an aspiring core value for you? I want to be a superfood spreader. A superfood spreader <laughs> on the megaphone. I want to have a lot of people experiencing what I'm experiencing with my health. And I want water as a human right, clean water for everyone. So I work on that issue as well. Okay, okay so there's, you have an activist part of you that works on clean water. That is, your, that is something that you do. And you also want to spread superfoods. I'm assuming you mean Purium. You want to get this into the lives of others. Okay, so is your core value... Your core value is that I want is is um is is caring about others is is other people having this experience. Sure. Now, are your is, are your actions in alignment with that? Is that driving they're a behavior? They're, they're really getting there. I'm focused more on it, Rachel. I'm less likely to self sabotage in this last week than I've ever been. Okay, great. Tell me more about that. When you say I'm getting there, what is changing? What are you noticing? What behaviors are changing? I made the commitment to drop everything and focus on my business and certain, you know, really address the weaknesses that I feel, one of which is technology and driving my team crazy with, wait, how do we sign on? There's um, so many dynamics and I get confused with it. And I really am focusing on trying to, you know, be directional and understanding how everything works, particularly the tech. Okay. Uh, and after just filling out, you know, a form, that was eight pages long applying for an application and trying to get everything to go where it was supposed to go. Um, the tech is a huge challenge for me. I'm assuming I'm not the only one experiencing that with the company. It's not the company. It's just, there's nowhere to turn unless you drive your upline crazy. So, you know, that sort of thing is challenging. Ooh, I love that you said there's nowhere to turn unless you drive your upline, like, upline crazy. Is there anyone afraid of driving their upline crazy? Oh yeah. I mean, okay. If we, I was, tech, if we had a tech person, we could call Rachel or write to like we do in chat. I'm stuck here on Instagram. <laughs> I mean, they go, you know, you can go into, you can go into YouTube and all of that. And then you're off, you're off your goal, your core value for 15 yeah. minutes. So you can yeah. facilitate yourself to hit your goal. I spent a lot of time chasing apples. Okay, so a couple of things, a few things that I heard. First of all, you were talking about not being distracted. Like you've focused, you're dedicating your time. You're being disciplined around no distractions. I remember Tala once talking about how he stopped going to festivals. He was like, I am not, I'm like, I got to get to my, like now I'm aligning with my goal and I'm going to not go to festivals, right? And I remember I had the same thing that happened to me in my first year. I said, if I want to get to crown, I was in my first year. I said, I'm committed from day one. I said, I'm an, I know what it takes to build a business. It means I have to do something every single day for the first year to keep the doors open. The first year is so important. That first year, when you start a business, you give it, you give it your all, 100%. That meant I was like not traveling. I'm not gonna go to parties on the weekend. I mean, like, I'm like somebody who's like burning, I like Burning Man, I like parties, I like festivals, I mean, I like all the fun stuff, right? But I said, I'm not gonna do all that stuff this year. And that was a hard decision, but I was like, I'm deciding this because if I see that I have my eyes on crown, and that is my decision. And I'm, I'm aligning with that decision. That means a commitment. And when I made that commitment, it meant I will bust all obstacles. I will not let a single obstacle get in my way. I've decided. I've now aligned myself with that core value of discipline. So I work every single day until I get to that goal. Um, another thing. Our I heard uplines are great too, Rachel. I just wanted to say that. I think oh, of all course. Who's your them. upline? Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> okay, awesome. It's Christine and Mary Beth and Dana and uh, Lisa. They are fantastic. They're great. Okay, yeah. good. So, um, and I heard that, you know, Squeaky Wheel get, does get the grease. Uh, Jillian, who, who hit Blue Diamond in her fourth month last month, literally asked me questions all day long, those four whole four months, called me up. She was like at 6 a.m. texting me, sorry, but at... It, it, at midnight texting me, sorry, but I was so stoked that she had, that she had the confidence to reach out to me because otherwise I could not have gotten helped her get there. She's over there crying now. She's embarrassed. No. <laughs> but literally like I was terrified of reaching out to my upline as well. I just want to say I was terrified. I, I, I was only comfortable talking to Sarah. I would never reach up past her. 
<laughs> and so I commend all of you who do, because it really is important that you cultivate your relationship with your upline and reach out. Because if you reach out 100%, they'll reach out 100%. It's got to be mutual. It's got to be give and take, right? You got to let, you got to, you got to be willing to go get it so that they see she wants it. All right, let's help her. Anyone else? Aspiring core values versus core values. What you're aspiring to versus what you've got. I'd love to go, Rachel. Hi, Angel. Thank you. Um, so I think my core values like for right now is uh, complete freedom, financial freedom, sovereignty to go wherever I want, the time and how it's spent. Mm -hmm. So, but an aspiring one is very similar to Stephanie. Um, it's accessibility. I want everyone to be able to have the blessing of these superfoods of water. It's, it's a human right. And, um, I really believe that this is even like the future mm -hmm. and I want to push full force as this, as my core or aspiring value mm -hmm. is just, this is the future. We will get there mm -hmm. and we will make this accessible to everyone. Everyone will have superfoods and everyone will have water. Beautiful. So what are the core values that drive your action to make that happen? Uh, yeah, a lot of consistency, just 90% of the battles won and showing up. Uh, she just woke up from her nap, but like, it's not going to stop me from coming onto the calls. Um, Nova helped me with time blocking and it's been super helpful uh, to schedule myself because, you know, the freedom is awesome, but we also have to structure ourselves and our consistency. So I show up for the calls on like Monday, Friday and work all in between whenever she's asleep. And I have to stay consistent to only working in those times and when she's asleep. Uh, so I'm not like overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, um, so, so you had, it sounds like you had, you had an aspiration you, of, of, of discipline and some kind of structure mm -hmm. and now you're finding it. Yeah, I'm totally finding balance. Uh, it's been a nice two months of that. <laughs> so that core value is becoming authentic. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, anyone else? Rita, you look so amazing over there. I love that gorgeous jacket. Let's, let's chat woman. Let's bring you on. Hi. Hi. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rita, Rita and I are in leadership together. And so we've been having this conversation about core values, aspirational versus um, authentic core values. And I'm just curious, Rita, in your own life, you know, what is, what is your experience and like, what is your understanding of the subject? Like what comes to mind when we're talking about core values? Mm. Um, for me, it really is my driving force in my actions, my core values. And just as what our friend shared, like freedom is such a core value of mine. And that reflects in time, freedom, location, independence, you know, being my own boss being able to um, design my life and what it looks like and then health freedom, you know, like I had a time period in my life where I didn't have freedom in my body. I didn't have mobility. And so I value that so much, you know, I value that health freedom. And so thus I want to share that with others. Um, and I think what's interesting about aspiring core values and Steph really hit on this is that our fears and our limiting beliefs can make a core value aspirational. So something like if we're like, wow, success is a core value, but we haven't yet stepped into allowing ourselves to be in that space, then it'll be an aspirational core value. So I think there is some personal work along, along the way of, of exactly what you're saying and what you were digging in with Steph there was what are some of our aspirational core values and why? <laughs> so what are we stepping into and what are we making space for? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, um, you know, the network marketing core values, I mean, you just like hit on some of those and um, let's see, I have some written down here. So I would like to hear from, you know, you or anybody, like what are the top seven values of court network marketing? Let's try to hit those. Like what are the, what in this, in this field, what are our core values? Collaboration is one. <laughs> Collaboration, perfect. 
I'm seeing service, integrity. All right, you guys are going for it. Definitely service. Absolutely, we're servant leaders, you know, we're leading with service. Empathy. <laughs> I'm gonna throw some out there. Consent, listening, all right. How about financial security? Being coachable, yes. Authenticity. Belief. Belief, yes. We have the whole seven areas of belief. That's a whole teaching in itself, the seven areas of belief, believing in the company, believing in ourselves, believing in um, network marketing, believing in, this isn't actually what I was talking about as far as the core values, but these beliefs are really key. Um, yeah. So financial security, we've talked about having, no one said financial security, but what about that? Is anyone doing this for financial security? Does anyone have that core belief of financial security? What does financial security mean? Thank you, Mary Beth. What does financial security mean? What does that mean to you? We don't talk about it much, financial security. I'll we all want to help everyone. We all want to do good. We're all, we all just love everyone, want the whole world to do well. But what about, your, how about, how about, how about taking care of yourself, putting your own oxygen mask on? I'll say something about that. Thank you. Sometimes my whole life feels like it's distilled down to the feeling of how often can I create situations where I actually feel safe because of how much subconscious programming is coming from places, lifetimes, trauma, whatever, where I didn't feel safe. And having created financial security for myself on this path has been an enormous tool to create feeling of safety. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm technically safe, you know, I'm not being stalked by a jaguar or you know any of that it's this creating a circumstances where i can also even receive healing support from other people to help the nervous system unwind and do that deeper work that i didn't have access to when i was in financial stress for mm. most of my life before and that self care wasn't modeled or prioritized for me growing up so now to create a situation where I'm not scared about whether I can feed my kids and I can then go back and do all that old work of clearing all that so that I feel safe in more and more and more moments of my day and can create that for my children and my community and beyond and beyond and help other people create that feeling of truly feeling embodied and safe and free and pleasurable and joyful and relaxed mm. i think that's changing the world Whew. you just hit home with that one the word security safety the word safety feeling safe oh that's so huge i just totally relaxed into that feeling that vision of security being safe knowing my kids are going to eat, knowing I'm going to eat. Has anyone ever been afraid that they're not going to make it this month or live like that? Yeah, I've been there. I lived in my car. And I know people who've lived on the street and have made it out of that. The average person is $500 away from total ruin, from homelessness, from um, you know, financial disaster. So financial security, this is one of the core values in this industry. And we're here to help you with that. That's a huge why of mine is helping other people with financial security. Thank you, Christina. And we talked about service. How many of you lead with service in your, in your, um, on your lives? <laughs> All right. I see some hands. How many of you lead with site financial security in your lives? How many of you talk about financial security in your lives? So interesting. Just something to think about. Just something to notice there. Hey, what are we comfortable about? Where are we really in alignment? Okay. 
Um, sometimes. <laughs> okay, good. A little. Yes, me. <laughs> I know Ashley Castro is like queen of talking about finance, about financial security. That has been a conversation I've seen her have on. She's a your model for me in that, Ashley. In fact, maybe you could even talk about that if you feel like coming on at some point or if you feel like sharing anything about that now and like how you do your lives. Do you want to? Yeah. Come? Can you hear me? Uh, yay. Awesome. Yeah. Ashley, yay! This, this is perfect. I'm out running errands, so I have to hop in the store in a minute. But um, I love this conversation around core values. I have looked for a way my entire life to do work that aligned with my core values and have often tried to fit myself in different molds and different boxes that would allow me to make income, but also allow me to be aligned with my values. And I can say with confidence that there is nothing like being an entrepreneur that will allow you that freedom. And especially being an entrepreneur in this business model, it's so powerful. So I have one of my main driving core values is family. Like when I became a mom, the fire inside of me was lit. That mama bear energy, it was no longer okay for me to like be a starving artist. Like, oh, I'm just gonna live off of my like jewelry and like live in a van. Like, nope, like that was not gonna fly anymore. Now I have like three kids to take care of. And I knew from the beginning of becoming a mom, I don't want to live that traditional lifestyle I've seen where one or both parents is outside of the house, working themselves ragged, still to just barely make ends meet. I want to be home and have as much financial freedom as I can and time with my family, uninterrupted time, because I look at my kids and I'm like, you are the stewards of the earth. Like you're the next generation. I need to raise you and raise you well and have time with you. And so I would say that all of my core values of teaching, of enthusiasm, of family, um, each one teach one, like I have so many core values, all of them though, the way that I see these core values that all of them rest on this foundation of financial security. As long as money is what is paying our bills, as long as money is what is like putting food on the table, if we don't have financial security and financial freedom, we're in a constant state of fight or flight, constant state of fight or flight. And so for me, addressing that root cause of financial stability and financial security, it's everything. It's everything. So I have been talking about this since day one, actually since day negative one, when I met Sarah Rhinelander on Instagram, the way we connected was that I made a post holding my baby who's just turned six, but she was a baby at the time. I was crying and I was just saying, I don't understand this. How is it that we pay professional athletes millions of dollars to entertain us? And they're just printing money like nobody's business. Yet the average family can't even put food on the table or is living on food stamps. So they're wondering where, you know, their next meal is going to come from. Or if you're not in that place, most people don't have enough money to like get themselves massages, holistic health care. You know, there's these different layers and levels of financial abundance. So that was something that I said in my post, I am changing this. I don't know how, but I'm going to change this for myself, for my family. And then Sarah and I connected on Instagram that day. And I was like, oh my God, what do you do? <laughs> what do you do? You look like you've got some magic over there. Um, and it was Purium. And so that has been my story throughout. And so how I share, um, I'm curious here, like who feels super comfortable talking about money on social media? Drop a one in the comments. If you're like, yes, honey, I can talk about money all day and drop a two in the comments. If you're like, oh, talking about money online or talking about money in general is a little like uncomfortable. I'm not so much there. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Seeing so many twos. So one of the best products that we have, one of the best products that we have is our business is this business model. So if you're not talking about that, you are missing out on a huge chunk of what we're here providing people this service of. So you don't need to have made millions of dollars with Perium in order to talk about money. All you need is your story. And we all have a story with money. We all have a story with money. We have a story about how we've been making money, what we love about it, what we don't like about it. We have a story about maybe financial stress, or we have a story about being grateful, but not satisfied and wanting more. And so I want to encourage everybody to get so clear about what your relationship is with money and how this business is providing you an opportunity to come into a deeper, 
better, more juicy, yummy relationship with money. You could talk about money online all day. There's so many ways to, to talk about it, to talk about your dreams, to talk about what would you do if you were a conscious millionaire? You know, what would you do? How would you help the world? How would things change? Yes, Christina, let's talk about money, honey. So, I mean, you can check out my Instagram. Like I have a whole highlight saved on money. I talk about money all the time. I love talking about money, about healing the money wound, about coming in better relationship with money, about what I would do if I was in charge of all the wealth on the planet, you know, and saying like, I feel grateful and empowered that I have solutions. And if you feel that you have stress around money, if you feel like there's more that you want out of life, reach out to me. I feel empowered with solutions. And if you're here on this call, whether this is your first call or you're a crown in the company, you have a solution. Like you have a solution for people. You don't have to use that word, but you have a pathway that people can use to heal their relationship with money, to step into a better flow with money, to have more of that financial security. So do not be afraid to talk about money. Rachel, did that answer your question? Does that give ideas on how people can like talk about this, share their lives? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Dang girl, nailed it. Thank you so much. Woo. Above and beyond. Flying You're welcome. Star. Love you all. Yeah, and I have totally enjoyed your money posts. I have totally enjoyed your highlights. So at home in the hive is um, Ashley's Instagram handle at home in the hive. So you can at <laughs> home in the hive. <laughs> um, so yeah, go follow her and check out how she shares about that. And um, Christina talked the other day about how she shared um, her first, one of her first posts was like her vision of her future and what she wanted to create. And that was attracting her first tribe what she wanted, what she plans to create with this, with this company. And so you have options, even if you've never made a dollar with Karen, you already have a business story because your business story is your vision of what you're creating, right? So what else? We're getting through the core seven, <laughs> seven core values. We have community. That's pretty easy. You guys ever talk about community and your widen your reach promo and doing your lives? Anybody like talk about the amazing community I'm part of? Anybody love your community? Feel free to shout it out in the comments. What are your thoughts about community? How do you share about community? That is something they're very unique to this business. I have to say that I was a wedding photographer, a solopreneur before. I was so lonely. And one of the things that made me so miserable in my business was that I was doing it all by myself. And as soon as I came to Perium, that was the first thing that satisfied me was that I was like, I have mentorship. I have people who care about me, people who want to do what want me to do well, not just talking to other photographers who are competitive, won't tell you their business secrets, are like, oh, you stay over there. Don't get near my clients. These are my photography brides over here. It was like everyone had hoarding mentality. Like people think that people are competitive in network marketing. Try having any other business. Try having being a photographer, a wedding planner, a wedding coordinator. There's always going to be competition. I'm not going to give you my business secrets. This is the first company I've been in where it's like, we share everything we know. We want everyone to do well. Your success is my success. My success is your success. We try to spread the information. Community. All right. And that's also collaboration, right? Collaborating. One of the ways that we're... Um, uh, my team and I are, we, we have like six of us who are doing a, and we did this before with Christina and some fitness people where we're doing, we're collaborating. We're just like, Hey, let's do a zoom event about fitness, the fitness business opportunity for fitness people, for people who are, you know, gym owners or people who are fitness instructors. Like, Hey, we have a common interest in nutrition to support our health and our, and our fitness. Let's come together and see how we can work together. We're leading with that in our lives right now. We're leading with that and coming together in collaboration. Yeah, collaboration. And another value. So number one, financial security. Number two, service. Number three, community. Number four, collaboration. And number five, teaching. One of the things I, I remember early on is my mentors were going to play, we're, we're like, you know, going to talk, um, sorry, Tony Robbins events and Bob Proctor events. And they, they bring us the juice for free. We're like learning all this stuff that these, you know, top earners in the company are bringing us their information for free and they're studying with these incredible people and it's an opportunity to rise and become a teacher. So not only are you receiving as a student, you also, you can get incredible business mentorship for free, personal development for free, and you also get to learn to teach it and become a leader. 
leadership. That's number six, leadership. <laughs> Stepping into leadership. I've seen some lives of people talking about how they're in this awesome business opportunity where they get to cultivate their leadership. Some of you, some of you have on your profile picture, I am, a, I am, I cultivate leaders. That's on mine. That's on my profile. I cultivate leaders, <laughs> right? You can have it too, because you do. Every single one of you who has one brand partner or more is leading. You're all cultivating leaders. You're learning how to cultivate leaders. So you're doing good. The last one, number seven is achievement. And recognizing and acknowledging achievement and being acknowledged for your, and not acknowledged for your achievement. How many people go on unacknowledged in their achievements in life? Okay, thank you for raising your hands. Yeah. How awesome is it to get acknowledged? You shared a gift card. <laughs> Yay, welcome to the team. You're on the team, you have a team. Oh my gosh, you just went consultant. Holy cow. Congratulations on going on, on a K club. Holy cow, you just went live. Woo, everyone's celebrating you. So those are the seven. And it doesn't mean that there aren't other core values, top core values in network marketing, but that was one that we came up with in leadership the other day. Can you repeat them? Sure. Number one, financial security. Number two, service. Number three, community. Number four, collaboration. Number five, teaching. Number six, leadership. Number seven, achievements. Now with all those juicy core values, could you possibly go live and get three lives in by Friday, tomorrow night at 10 o'clock about some of these topics. You've got Instagram, you've got Facebook, and you've got stories. Those are three different places you can have video lives and get wide in your reach points. Who here is ready to go live? Drop me at three and raise your hand at the same time. Type and raise your hand at the same time. <laughs> All right, <laughs> cool. So wide in your reach, by the way, is your golden ticket into not just your next rank, but leadership mastery with Sarah Rhinelander. Whoop, whoop. Who's gonna do the leadership mastery course? Who is going on this diamond run six week class with Sarah on Mondays at one Pacific time? Oh my goodness, top earner of the company. Like I said, it's like getting, it's like, you know, free training with the top leaders, the highest income earner, and who happens to be all of our upline, holy cow, like how lucky are we for free. This application is designed to benefit you. <laughs> as much as it looks like an application, so I can get into that, it's like the application alone is gonna give you business. It's gonna be an income producing activity. So what is expected in this application? Let me see if I remember it all. Number one, you have to have 199 widen your reach points before you can even apply, okay? so. How do you do that? 199 wide and reach points. You have three lives by tomorrow night. That's 99 points because the cutoff time is tomorrow, Friday. So you have till tomorrow night to get 99 points, three lives. And then you start over on Saturday from Saturday from, and then Saturday you have a chance to do another three lives and that gives you another 99 points, right? That's another 99 points. And now you're at, you're at, um, can I count? 198. <laughs> okay. And when you've done 10 lives in one month, that gives you yet another 100 points. So now you're at 297. I can never do that part. We'll just say 300. Okay. Stephanie Mitchell has already got 10 this week. Go, Stephanie. I'm going to shout you out. Speaking of achievements and appreciation, way to go. Anybody else have 10 done? Who's got 10? Who's already done their 10? Anybody else? We got nine, I got nine. Go Angela, whoop, whoop. Halfway, Mary Jane. <laughs> Go six, Samantha, Jessica, 10, whoop, whoop. Halfway there, Kelly, almost can there. I ask? Can I ask a question? Yes. 
Can you clarify, do they have to be 10 lives or can it be a combination of lives and reels? It can be lives and reels. Thank you. You're welcome. And it also can be a pre-recorded video that you upload, although that doesn't, that's fine. And I'll just say it's not as highly prioritized in algorithms. You could do it on stories. If you do like a, a short story, that's like a minute long, you can, you can upload that to your stories, but you cannot, um, but if you, but if you upload a video to your IPTV, hey, Facebook, <laughs> oops, check your mates, please. Um, if you upload stories to your IGTV um, or to Facebook, yes, that counts. And it's, does, it's not going to get as much viewer attention. It won't be as high in the alg highly favored in the alg algorithms. Algorithms favor lives. So yes, it counts. Make sure you hashtag PHP Live 2021 and ask your upline how to submit it. It's really easy. Go to iLearn and it's the first link in iLearn. Go into your back office, go to iLearn. It's the very first link at the top. There's a blue link, very small writing. That's the link that you click and then it'll tell you, it'll walk you through, through the submission process so you can submit your lives. Very easy. So let's drop the link. Can anybody know what the link is? Can anybody drop the link to the actual, um, uh, I was gonna call it an audition, <laughs> to the Widen Your Reach, um, sorry, not Widen Your Reach, to Sarah's, to Sarah's application process, to, to, jump, to join in the Leadership Mastery six-week course with Sarah for free, um, drop it in there. There's a type form link. I can drop it in in a moment. If, there it is. Thank you, Lisa. Path to Mastery dot paperform.co. You can write it down if you can't copy it. Um, another thing is a static post, your business forward post. So I just kind of prepared you with these core values of network marketing of what you could talk about in a post, a static post, sharing your business forward story. Okay. So that is the other application. Um, and then there, I can't actually remember what all the steps are in the applications. Anybody else remember? I meant to, I had it written down and I lost the place where I wrote it. You have to take a shot of your widen the reach for your points for your 199. Mm -hmm. And you also have to put your um, information, uh, just be careful whenever you're downloading your lists because I put my 200 list or my 248 list, whatever I had. And Rachel, that, could, will only take one load. So if you have five sheets, you have to figure out how to put them in a file, I think, to put them into that. So anytime that they want you to drop it in, use a file. Thank you. Yes. So you want to write your list of 200, go to Facebook, go to Instagram, write a list of all your followers, go to your phone, do a brainstorm, think of whoever you can. Just write down, don't judge your names, just put them down. This is like a brainstorm, okay? That's going to help your juices flow. If you just write without thinking, It'll, you'll think of a lot more names than trying to hold you back. Don't judge it. Don't say not that person. They don't deserve superfoods. They were rude to me. I, there's no way I'm going to let them get healthy. No, we're not going to do that. We're just going to write all, all the names down. Even your valet, even the person who lives next door, whatever names you can think of. All right. And then you'll get creative. Believe me, solutions will come. You'll probably contact all those people. So, all right. Just saying. Um, what else is on there? Did we get to 200 names? Yeah, adding your influencers and your chicken list. Exactly. Your chicken list is the people you're most terrified of contacting. Make sure you get their names in there. So, um, all right. I think we got it. So, you, so basically, if you do 10 lives, do three lives by tomorrow night, three lives over the weekend, and do a total of 10 by Monday, you can apply on Monday. So I'm telling you guys, apply on Monday. Get your 10 in and apply on Monday. Do it. Just do it. Make a decision, align with it, and action. Um, and then guess what? Those of you who apply Monday have this extra special opportunity because you're going to share what you want to experience, what you want to learn in this mastery class. And the first people who apply, she is going to take into most consideration because if you apply last minute, her head's already full. So <laughs> apply Monday, get your done, yours done. And that's also going to give a boost to all of the points. Everyone's points will go up by Monday. So any other thoughts here? Oh, I wanted to read you guys something. Uh, whoops, I just lost it, hold on. So I got a text from one of the mentors, it's kind of a cohort, somebody who I used to do photography with, who sends out these like inspirational quotes. And of course my phone is actually, here we go. 
And it says, do you ever feel like you're too concerned with what other people think about you? I was the same way until I realized other people's opinions don't pay my bills. So I'll continue to dream big dreams. I'll continue to have the audacity to request success. I'll always bet on the underdog. So here's to you, here's to me and us. Here's to the crazy ones who dare to bet on ourselves and win. All right, we got seven minutes. Let's just open up and have a friendly conversation. What's inspiring you right now? What are you going to do with the next? What are your aspirations? What are you going to do in the next few days that you've never done before? My team is inspiring me. Hi. Hi. My team's totally inspiring me. I love them so much. And I want to see them achieve their goals so much that they're making me get on the phone and call people and text people. And I'm so grateful that we have something really awesome to share. That's what I'm super grateful for too. Thank so you. Thank you. Appreciate that. And I just realized I didn't see Stephanie and then she was going to be, I just want to just double check. Is Stephanie Dawn on the line? Because I didn't see you. And I also know that you were going to be, she was going to be driving. Okay. I mean, she was going to be on a ferry. So, okay. I'm not going to worry. All right. Anyone else? <laughs> Rachel, wh yes. when does it start? When does it start? The, the Sarah. Okay. Sarah's thing, it starts, I think it's May 17th. It's the Monday after Dave Sandoval's wedding. <laughs> Dave Sandoval's wedding is the 15th, which is Saturday. So it would be Monday. Yeah, the 17th. Thank you. Yep. So I Rachel. Just, I, I just wanted to pop on really quick and talk about, you know, yeah, my team is definitely inspiring me so much this month. It's been, I've been in the business a couple of years and for some reason there's definitely some igniting everything's igniting and I don't go live very often and I don't really um, bring my authenticity forward and I definitely haven't been biz forward so the business side of things and everything that we talked about today is just so inspiring all of you guys have been there throughout this journey and I just you know it's so wonderful to be here and to learn from leaders and learn from newbies and just the whole dynamic of the business um, it's just really inspiring and I'm uplifted by everybody and I'm going to get out there and be authentic authentic <laughs> and um, you know it's hard but I feel like it's definitely the way success wants you know it's it's definitely the path so Thank you. That is so inspiring to hear. That warms my heart. I'm so glad. Yay. Business forward. You got this. Mm -hmm. And there's a way to do it authentically where you're not sounding weird. It's just like, you just be yourself. You got so much, so many core values to celebrate. Thank you. Talk I wanted hard. to hop on. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, hi. Um, <laughs> I am so inspired still. It's just carrying me through from the training that you did last week. Rachel, um, about being comfortable and starting a new team. And um, also really inspired by my crown leaders, Rebecca or uh, Mary and Christina, um, with just how they've been um, just holding me up and supporting me and, you know, just like really sharing their wisdom on when I've got challenging situations that I'm going through. Um, and also just, you know, picking back off of, um, what Laura said, really inspired by my team and just my, my, why my big, why right now is to see them hit their goals and, um, to support them and going business forward to getting really, really uncomfortable to rebuild my team and, you know, sharing, um, sharing this opportunity with voice chats and, um, you know, just reaching out and, um, getting into that frequency of, of this uh, magical gift that we have. Fantastic. Thank you. And thanks for uh, shouting me out from last week. I appreciate that. I'm glad that, that um, res registered with you, resonated. It, it was wonderful, Rachel. 
it, I think oh. it resonated with everybody. Oh, and Lisa you. made Diamond. I was I was so excited. Lisa Holtz made Diamond. We all worked on that. And Mary Beth and Dana. It was just a charge. It was great. Your team was rocking. <laughs> Way to go supporting that Diamond. So what lives are you going to do this week? What are your ideas for topics for lives? What are some things you're thinking like, I'm going to go live about this? Some examples. Okay, Rach. Thank you. I have to jump off in one minute, but I just want to say um, that what I'm going to do this week and what I'm inspired to do before I answer your most direct question, your most recent, uh, free, uh, the question you just asked was, I'm definitely um, leaning in, leading with the business this week. It's my huge, it's my thing. I'm just doing it. I did a live today with Stephanie and talked about it for the first time. And I'm just going to, I'm just, you know, um, the it's a process of figuring out what the business is for me, right? How it, why it's a part of my life. Um, not just the why, but how it's just a really good process to go through. Like, why are you doing this business? Is it just money, blah, blah, blah. So all that's been really good. And I'm having to like deconstruct all of that and write it down and all that. So I'm going to be doing lives basically about that's to answer your, the question you just did, I'm going to be doing lives about the business and empowering mothers and the great economic paradigm shift that is happening so you either get on the train or you're going to get left behind because um the old way is not serving people except for the people the billionaires at the top and that's the big irony about network marketing everybody thinks that this pyramid somehow only but really that's the way it is right now there's just only these billionaires at the top there everybody else is struggling really hard in this country. And so we have got to change the game. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about. Way to take control of the wealth, girl. Tip my hat to you. <laughs> you have yeah, a very authentic way of talking about the business, Tanya. Whenever you're on our lives, I just love the way you talk about the business. If anyone wants to follow Tanya, at TS Boundless. Boundless is her studio, like bound, Rebounder, Boundless. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Steph and I had a good um, live today. It's always frustrating. Even 45 minutes doesn't feel like enough time. It always feels a little bifurcated and like we don't get, I don't know, I definitely want to do it again. It's just like, it's such a big topic um, that we just touched on some themes, but I hope to do it again. Thank you, Stephanie, if you're on. But thanks. Thanks, Rach. You're you welcome. Too. All right. Well, it's the top of the hour, y'all. It's two o'clock. I'm actually heading over to another Zoom um, with the uh, uh, for my team. We're doing a little spring vitality retreat. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Ashley, and all of you for your voices. Really appreciate you on this call. I love you all. And this I'll get this replay up as soon as possible. Yay. Go get your lives. Love you. Thank you.